Gigabyte have completely redesigned their Aero series laptops and introduced the brand new 16 inch size. And while there are some nice improvements, there are also a lot of issues that you need to know about. My Aero 16 is maxed out with Intel's Core i9 12900HK CPU, Nvidia RTX 3080 Ti graphics, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, and a 16 inch 4K AMOLED screen. But you can absolutely still get good specs like an i7 and 3070 Ti for almost half the price. So refer to those links below the video to check out options. The lid, interior, and bottom panel are all CNC aluminum alloy with a silver finish, and overall build quality feels great. There wasn't much flex at all to the keyboard. It was quite solid, which is what you'd expect from an all-metal machine. There's only a little flex to the metal lid. It feels fairly solid, and it doesn't wobble when typing, so no problem. The hinges felt nice and sturdy. The action of moving the screen was consistent smooth until it got close to closing, at which point it was less stiff and closed with a satisfying little snap. The screen is surrounded by a thin rubber bezel and this is what comes into contact with the base when you close the lid. The lid was very easy to open as the middle section sticks out for the camera, and the screen goes back about 130 degrees which felt far enough for me. The laptop alone weighs under 2.3 kilos or 5 pounds and goes up to 3.1 kilos or 7 pounds with the 230 30 watt power brick and cables, and the included hub barely changes this. Despite the larger 16 inch screen, the Aero 16 is only slightly thicker compared to last year's Aero 15, it's quite portable. Mine has a 16 by 10 OLED screen with a resolution slightly higher than standard 4K. Although it's 60 hz the glossy 10 bit screen looks great. It comes color calibrated and has display HDR500 support. I've measured two different brightness levels. The blue bar is with HDR HDR off, so regular SDR content, while the red bar is with HDR on. With HDR on, we're able to get higher brightness levels, peaking at around 600 nits. However, Gigabyte appears to be limiting it to just under 400 nits in SDR mode. This could be for different reasons. Firstly, while I measured excellent color gamut in SDR mode at max brightness, it was much lower compared to HDR mode at max brightness. Basically, these AMOLED panels don't produce as good colors at higher brightness levels, so this is probably the main reason they're limiting the brightness, given this is meant for content creators. The other reason is more brightness can accelerate burn-in, something OLED panels can be susceptible to over longer periods of time. Like previous OLED panels used in the Aero series, screen brightness is adjusted with PWM, which some people may be sensitive to and can result in eye strain, though personally this never affects me. OLED also basically means unlimited contrast ratio, as blacks are represented by turning off pixels. And for this reason, backlight bleed is impossible here. There's also a 2560 by 1600 mini LED option with a 165Hz refresh rate though, which could be a better option if you also want to do some gaming on the side, or if you're just just paranoid about potential burn-in. There's a 720p camera above the screen in the middle, a welcome change from last year's nose cam underneath, and it's got IR for Windows Hello Face Unlock which worked fast. This is what the camera and microphone look and sound like, and this is what it sounds like while I'm actively typing on the keyboard. The keyboard has white backlighting only, no RGB, but unlike last year's Aero 17, all keys and secondary functions get lit up. Finally. There are two levels of keyboard brightness which can be adjusted by holding the function key and pressing the spacebar. Typing on the keyboard was fine. The keys are a little clicky, and it seems quite similar to last year's Aero 17. There's no caps lock light, which I found annoying at times. The software does tell you on screen when you change it, but you can't just look at the laptop and know if it's on or off. This also means if you remove the software or use a different operating system like Linux, then you've just got no idea. The right shift was a little short, which may annoy some people, but I only use the left shift, so I didn't notice. The power button is separate to the keyboard in the middle, and there appears to be some air vents around there too. The touchpad was excellent. 
Excellent. Definitely one of the better ones I've used. It's smooth to the touch, accurate, and the click just feels good. There are front facing speakers on either side of the keyboard, but I didn't think they sounded very good. They sound tinny with minimal bass, but they can get quite loud, and the latency mon results were looking good. The Aero 16 has far fewer ports compared to previous versions. The left has an air exhaust vent, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, and a 3.5mm audio combo jack. The right has two Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, there's an air exhaust on this side too, and the power input is near the back, that's it. Fortunately, it comes with the Aero Hub inside this included case if you need more connectivity. This connects to the laptop with a Type-C port and gives us Gigabit Ethernet, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, Mini Display port, and HDMI 2.0. Gigabyte suggests connecting the hub to the right with one of the Thunderbolt 4 ports for the best experience. I found the best way to connect it is with the frontmost Type-C port with the dongle facing towards the front. If you use the rear port, you're covering one of the Type-C ports up for no reason. If you instead put the hub the other way, you either cover the other Type-C port and some of the air exhaust, or can't fit it in with the power cable connected. You can connect the hub to the Type-C port on the left in either direction, but one way blocks the air exhaust vent, while the other way blocks the audio combo jack. The quality of the hub itself feels good, but it feels a bit awkward when plugged in. I expected it to sit flush with the machine, but movement is possible depending on what's connected, so it can move in into positions that it probably shouldn't. It does also come with a short braided Type-C cable, so you can use any port without blocking anything. I didn't actually find any of the hub's functionality limited by connecting it to the left Type-C port. So when they say best experience, I'm assuming they mean just that it won't cover anything else up, which is what I found. The backmost Type-C port can be used to charge the laptop with up to 100 watts, but the other two ports do not support that. So yet another reason not to waste that port on the hub. Now, all three Type-C ports do have DisplayPort support, but only the one on the left connects directly to the NVIDIA graphics bypassing Optimus. So in theory, this one should be fine for VR. The two Thunderbolt 4 ports connect via the Intel integration graphics. Meanwhile the hub's HDMI port only supports 4K 60Hz 8-bit, and it doesn't support G-Sync. And I also confirmed that this was the same regardless of which port you connected it to. There are 12 TR6 screws to remove to get inside, and the four down the front are shorter than the rest. I found it quite easy to pry open using the tools linked in the video description. Once inside, we've got the battery down the front, two PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD slots on either side of it, two memory slots above towards the middle, and the Wi-Fi 6E card on the right. Wi-Fi performance was okay, but not as good compared to other laptops with the same Wi-Fi 6E card that I've tested, or last year's Aero 17. Intel 12th gen supports either DDR4 or DDR5 memory, just not in the same laptop, and Gigabyte have chosen to offer the Aero 16 with either DDR4 or DDR5 memory. I have the higher tier DDR5 model here, but I'm working on a fair comparison between both memory types in the same laptop chassis. Make sure you're subscribed for that video. I've given it the same upgradeability score as last year's Aero 15 and 17 because we can change the same components, with half a point taken off from ease of access because of the uncommon TR screw type. But again, the tools I used link below the video can do this just fine. The Aero 16 is powered by a large 99 watt hour battery. In the YouTube playback test, the Aero 16 lasted for six and a half hours, which is quite a good result for an Intel based laptop. Most of the higher results were all AMD AMD Ryzen based, they seem to be more efficient. Last year's Aero 15 lasted for 20 minutes longer just ahead of it. However, the Aero 16 lasted 33% longer compared to last year's Aero 17. I ended the gaming test with 17% charge remaining because the frame rate dipped to unusable levels. Let's check out thermals next. There are three heat pipes shared between the CPU and GPU, with two fans which exhaust air out of the left, right, and rear below the screen. And there are plenty of vents under underneath for pulling air in. The Gigabyte Control Center software lets us change between five different built-in performance modes. From lowest to highest, we've got Power Saving Silence Mode, Meeting Mode, Gaming Mode, Turbo Mode, and Creator Mode. For each setting preset, you can change things like keyboard brightness, screen white point, and GPU boost, but I've done all testing with these on their defaults. There's also a fan control tab with different fan curves available by default. I haven't customized any of these for testing, and 
again have stuck to the defaults, but this gives you some more flexibility. It's also possible to toggle between these different fan modes by holding the function key and pressing the escape key, which has the fan icon. The temperatures were a little warm at idle considering the fans were turning on, but it's not a problem. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU stress tests and aim to represent a worst case heavy load scenario. Meeting mode was the coolest due to the low power limits, while gaming mode just above was the warmest. Creator mode was slightly cooler, then turbo mode was cooler still as it sets the fan to full speed by default. The cooling pad I test with, linked below the video, was able to further lower temperatures by around 8 degrees Celsius, a nice result. Thermal throttling wasn't happening, so the performance doesn't really change that much with the cooling pad. Lower temperatures might aid with boost speeds though, but it would be subtle. There wasn't a whole lot of difference in clock speeds outside of meeting mode. Creator mode was slower on the GPU, and that's because it seemed to be power limited to about 80 watts. Gaming and turbo modes were able to run the GPU up to 90 watts with the CPU also running at 45 watts. Meeting mode doesn't let the CPU go above 15 watts, as the goal is to keep the machine quieter in, well, meetings. In a CPU-only workload like Cinebench though, the processor is able to run much higher than 45 watts, as long as the GPU isn't needed. Creator mode consistently scored better than Turbo mode, but they're both within the margin of error range and ran at around 86 watts. The Aero 16 is stacking up reasonably well compared to others, especially for the single core score, which is now the highest we've measured from Intel 12th gen so far thanks to the i9 processor as these have higher single-threaded turbo boost speeds. The multi-core score wasn't quite as high as other 12th gen laptops, but still a decent result. It's worth noting the Zephyrus M16 a couple of spots ahead is actually a thinner machine, so it's not as if all the ones beating the arrow are thicker gaming laptops. The performance dips down if we unplug the charger and run purely off battery power. However, the single-core score doesn't change much and it's still the best result out of any laptop. The multi-core score is only beaten by the MacBook, far thicker MSI GE76, and interestingly, a couple of 8-core Ryzen laptops, which implies that AMD machines can be more power efficient in this test, given our Intel 12th gen options have more cores and threads. I've also done some extra thermal testing in creator mode with and without the Aero Hub covering the left air exhaust vent, just to see if it made any difference. But both the CPU and GPU temperatures were essentially the same. The performance was also basically the same too. The differences are well within the margin of error range. And just for completeness, the power levels were about the same too. So it doesn't seem to matter if you want to block one of the air vents with the hub. Though the hub did get warm, which probably isn't ideal for it. The keyboard was a little higher than the usual 30 degrees Celsius I typically see when just sitting there idle. And it felt warmer compared to plastic laptops as metal is better at conducting heat. Running the stress tests in meeting mode and it doesn't look too bad. But again, it feels warmer compared to similar temps on a plastic laptop. Gaming mode was now warmer in the middle, but the WASD area where you'd rest your hand while playing games is cooler. Creator mode looks fairly warm too, but the keys themselves felt fine, perhaps because they're not metal like the body of the laptop itself. The highest turbo mode was then cooler, but the fans are also much louder too. Let's have a listen. The fans could be silent at idle, but I found that they would randomly turn on every minute or so, which is why we've got two levels. Meeting mode with the stress tests was still relatively quiet compared to the others, though of course it would be much lower if you're not actively running a heavy workload. Don't forget, these are worst case results. Game mode was similar to a lot of gaming laptops I test in their higher modes, while turbo mode took things to the next level and was extremely loud. I'd definitely want headphones here, but again, there is fan control available, and given it wasn't thermal throttling, you probably don't need to max them out. Considering it wasn't thermal throttling and the fans can get even louder, I think it would have been nice if we had the option to boost the CPU above 45 watts when the GPU is also active. Otherwise, we just can't really take advantage of that thermal headroom. Now let's check out some content creator tests, given that's what the Aero 16 is designed for. 
Adobe Premiere was tested with the Puget Systems benchmark, and while we normally just run the test three times to get a good average, the Aero 16 was rather inconsistent. It scored anywhere between 936 and 1133. The result here is an average of nine different tests, so best case, the 1133 result would put it at the top of the graph as the best result, but it wasn't reproducible most of the time. Hence the lower averaged 987 score. DaVinci Resolve on the other hand was one of the better results for the Aero 16, only being beaten by higher wattage 3080 Ti machines, though it's right in line with a number of other Intel 12th gen laptops that have lower tier 3070 Ti graphics. Now I need to note that the first Aero 16 we received didn't even open Resolve at all, and I'm not talking about running the Puget Systems benchmark, I just mean straight up we installed DaVinci Resolve and couldn't even run it. Not exactly an ideal situation for a creator laptop. We were able to kind of work around this by disabling the Intel integrated graphics through a device manager, but this wasn't ideal and we found that there was still instability. After reporting this issue to Gigabyte, they sent us a second Aero 16, which is this one here, and it worked perfectly fine when it came to opening Resolve. So I can't say if this was actually some kind of hardware issue with the first model, or if it was just a one-off. We normally test Adobe Photoshop too, but for some reason the Puget Systems test just instantly crashes on our new Gigabyte laptops. This happened on both of our Aero 16s, and it also happened on two Aura 17 laptops. I can only assume that that's related to something that Gigabyte is doing, because I haven't had this problem on any other laptops. And then suddenly we get it on four separate Gigabyte laptops? That's a bit too coincidental. Now that said, we can still open Photoshop and use it perfectly fine, it just seems to be an issue running the benchmark tool. I reached out to Puget Systems and sent them the logs, and best they could tell, they thought it was an issue with the GPUs switching between integrated and discrete. And let me just say that it wouldn't be the first time I've seen this problem, as I had the same thing with last year's Aero 17. So definitely strange behaviour in addition to those resolve issues just mentioned. There are a couple of results from other people for Photoshop in the Puget Systems database from the Aero 16, though from an i7 and 3070 Ti model. I generally find single core performance to matter in this test, so I'd expect the i9 to do a bit better than what this person was getting. I've also tested SpecViewPerf, which tests out various professional 3D workloads. And here are the 3D mark results for those that find them useful. While not designed as a gaming laptop, the Aero 16 should still be capable of running some games after work with these high-end specs. Now although the Aero 16 does have the tallest 16x10 aspect ratio, all testing has been done with standard 16x9 resolutions. As regular 1080 p and 1440p are just the resolutions we've got for the purposes of comparing. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested the same on all laptops, and I've got the Aero 16 shown by the red highlight. It's not a particularly amazing result purely based on the CPU and GPU specs. The top two results have a similar i9 and 3080 Ti GPU. It's just that they've got higher power limits as they're thicker machines, so there's more thermal headroom. Anyway, it's still a decent result compared to many others, and able to run the game perfectly fine. We've got a different selection of machines at the higher 1440p resolution, as we only test laptops that can actually run it. Again, the Aero 16 isn't at the top, as you might have expected with this top-end spec combo, but still a playable result before even using features like DLSS. I wouldn't expect great 4K performance in AAA titles like this though. Control is a fairly GPU-heavy game, but again, even without DLSS, almost 100 FPS is a good result. Yeah, there are last gen 3080 laptops that are doing better than it, but again those have higher power limits, and more power equals more performance in games. The Aero 16 was still able to run the game above 60 FPS at 1440p. It's the lowest 3080 Ti result so far, so clearly if gaming is the focus, you'd be better off spending your money elsewhere. But there's no denying that the Aero 16 is still capable of gaming as a bonus. Although OLED screens have a fast response time, Gigabyte claims 0.2 ms seconds for this one, the system latency wasn't particularly impressive, perhaps due to the 60Hz display. This is the total amount of time between a mouse click and when a gunshot actually appears on the screen in CSGO. Though to be fair, it's doing much better compared to last year's Aero 17, which did not have OLED. There's no muck switch in the Aero 16, which is fine and not at all surprising 
considering this isn't a gaming focused laptop. Both M.2 slots offer fast PCIe Gen 4 storage, and the 1TB SSD in my Aero 16 was doing very well for the read speeds, and although the writes were lower comparatively, it's still much higher compared to older Gen 3 drives. Normally at this point I'd be showing you how well the SD card slot performs, but for some reason the Aero 16 doesn't have one at all. Gigabyte decided to completely remove that from a creator laptop. It's not even present on the hub, it's just completely gone. The older Aero 15 and 17 had that, and it was one of the things that I personally really liked about it. So I'm quite personally disappointed to see it missing here. The BIOS might not be as modern looking compared to other brands like Asus, MSI or Lenovo, but the core basic functionality is still present. There are a few extras compared to Asus laptops, but there's nowhere near the level of customization MSI's advanced BIOS offers. The Gigabyte Control Center software needs a lot of work. It felt unfinished and buggy though there have been some improvements with updates while we've been testing it over the last few weeks. Some of the behaviour is just weird and annoying. For example, if you mute the sound in Windows then reboot, the control centre overwrites the Windows settings with the volume levels it's got and unmutes it. Basically, unless you change the volume or mute in the Gigabyte software, the Windows settings will eventually get overwritten. I think this happened with screen brightness originally, but we're a couple of updates in and that doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Regardless, I found this annoying, like I was in a constant fight with it rather than it working for me. Normally if you set something in Windows, the control center software would adopt the change rather than just resetting it after a reboot. Linux support was tested with Pop OS 21.10, and by default the keyboard, touchpad, Wi-Fi, camera, speakers and Ethernet via the hub worked fine. Keyboard brightness and volume adjustment shortcuts worked, but screen brightness and the fan speed change shortcut slash escape key did not work out of the box. Let's discuss pricing and availability next. This will of course change over time, so refer to those links in the description for updates. At the time of recording, a similar configuration to what I've tested goes for $4300 US dollars on Best Buy. But for almost half that price, it's possible to get the i7 and 3070 Ti configuration, which I suspect will offer far better value as far as price to performance ratio is concerned. Best Buy frequently runs sales though, so again refer to the link links below the video for deals. Alright, let's summarise all the good and bad parts of the Aero 16 to help you decide if it's a laptop worth buying. As always, the OLED screen looks great. It's got high colour gamut, good brightness and amazing contrast with deep blacks. Although not advertised as a gaming laptop, it can certainly run games, and when paired with that 165Hz mini LED screen, it would probably be an even better experience. Now I'm by no means saying that this is a gaming laptop, you can obviously get other laptops that will outperform it for less money. I would just consider it to be a bit of a bonus that you can run games on the side. I thought the touchpad was excellent, and keyboard pretty good, and the all metal design feels very solid, though it is at the expense of feeling warmer compared to other plastic laptops. Despite how the exterior may feel, the internals didn't get very hot, and could run quite cool depending on what level of fan noise you can tolerate. There's customization at least, which is nice. CPU performance was decent for the size of the machine, and although battery life couldn't match AMD Ryzen options, the Aero 16 was lasting longer compared to most other Intel based laptops I've tested. The creator tests that we could run scored well, but that's where things start to fall apart. The fact that I had issues running content creator workloads on different Aero 16 machines is kinda concerning. Not being able to even open DaVinci Resolve on a brand new Aero 16 laptop is a pretty major problem for a content creator machine. But as mentioned it was fine on our second laptop, so hopefully that was just a one off problem. In fact I'm kind of sure that it has to be, because if it was a widespread problem it would be something that they would have to fix with an update ASAP. Especially considering that Gigabyte claim they've tested compatibility in a number of creator applications. I've sent them details on all these problems, so hopefully they're able to work it out. I didn't think that the front facing speakers were very good, and the lack of ports was sad to see. The abundance of ports is one of the things I've really liked with the Aero series in the past. And now they've just gone full Apple and removed the ports and given us a dongle. But I guess unlike Apple, the dongle is at least included and you don't have to buy it separately. Though that said, as you probably know, in the last year or 
also, even Apple has reverted and started adding ports back into their machine. So hopefully Gigabyte continues to copy Apple and adds the ports back next generation. I could almost personally live with the dongle if it had an SD card slot, and if it didn't just move around a bunch when plugged into the machine. There were quite a few times when plugging in and unplugging cables that I felt like I was just going to break the Type-C port or something. I was really looking forward to this laptop after hearing about it at CES and using the Aero 15X and Aero 17 personally for the last few years. Unfortunately, if I had spent the level of money that Gigabyte is asking for the Aero 16, I know that I would have been left disappointed. But like I said, it's possible that many of the issues that I've had could be improved with updates. Though not all of them, unless we can download more ports. Check out some of my other laptop review videos over here next, and if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching, and get subscribed for future laptop reviews like this one.